Hi everyone, Suzanne here. Welcome to my very first Nancy Drew game playthrough. Now I am aware that this probably won't be everyone's cup of tea to watch, but life has been a little bit difficult lately. I've been having a little bit of a hard time if I'm being honest and I just really wanted to chill out and play something really nostalgic and cozy and stuff like that so that's what I'm doing today. So I have played I think three of the Nancy Drew games before. I've never played this one so this is Ghost of Thornton Hall. I'm a huge Nancy Drew fan. I have loved the books since I was a child and I do really really enjoy these games. They're a little bit cheesy but that's why I love them. I'm not sure how many videos this series is going to be. Possibly two or three maybe maybe four videos. We'll see how long it takes me to get through it. But anyway, let's just get straight into it. Okay, so new game, obviously. Uh, so choose your difficulty level, amateur sleuth or a master sleuth. Honestly, I think I'm gonna go with amateur sleuth because these games are actually kind of difficult. Like they're not fully 100% kids games. Some of the puzzles and stuff are actually difficult to figure out. So I think I'm gonna go with this where I can get the hints if I need them so I don't get stuck. Don't judge me. <laughs> okay, let's go with amateur sleuth. <laughs> time is it? Late. Savannah? Is that you? What's wrong? I got a case for you. Can it wait until later? I'm sorry, it can't. There's been a kidnapping. A girl just a little older than you. <sighs> Shouldn't the police be taking care of this? There's only so much they can do and she needs to be found before something bad happens. What do you mean? The call came in for me, but... I can't go. Thornton Hall is a dangerous place for people like me. Ghost hunters, you mean? So people think it's haunted? Mm-mm. They know. Jessalyn needs someone who ain't afraid to run after her. That ain't me. What I'm asking of you is dangerous. After everything you did for me in Japan? I'll do it. Thank you. Drive to the airport now. I'll arrange a ticket. And Nancy? I didn't call you just because you're a good detective. I called you because you're a skeptic. Thornton Hall is no place for anyone who believes. Well, then you called the right detective. I'm serious. You think long and hard about that before you get on that plane. If what you find on the island is going to get to you, don't go. Stay home. Don't worry. I'm on the case. Okay. sure about this? I am. Watch yourself around the Thorntons. They earn their bad reputation. Well, thanks for being concerned. I should be okay. Well, it depends who's here. Hope for your sake Wade's not skulking around. Or that loony bin reject, Harper. But it's Charlotte you best watch for. Black Rock Island belongs to her now. Has ever since the night the fire took her. Take care now. Okay, so a nice creepy start. Um, But yeah, I mean... In Nancy Drew, it's never actually supernatural. It's always, it's kind of like Scooby-Doo. There's always someone behind it, so we can just use that as comfort to not get too scared. Okay, so we have our task list here. So we need to explore the island and find Jessalyn. And just so people know, this is like a really old fashioned game. So you literally, you just click everything. We don't even need to use the keyboard. So even the instructions for walking are just clicking. Okay, let's check over here. Oh, what's this? Scavenger list, 21 items to search and find. Spot a bat. Key to Charlotte's bedroom already found. Gravestone. This will probably be useful later. There's nothing else here. Okay. Uh, hey! <gasps> You're not Savannah. No, but you must be Wade. Is she with you? Are you the new assistant? What's his name? Get canned or something? 
Logan? I don't know. All I know is that she thought I'd be the right person for the case. She's not coming. What did you just say? She said she was sorry to send me, but nothing could get her to come here. I never took her for a coward. Well... She seemed pretty scared of the ghosts. Ghosts? No, that ain't it. She's scared of seeing me. Why? I hope Savannah understands the mess she dropped you in. Uh, what kind of mess? What kind of mess? Take a look around and then you tell me. Who's more welcome here? The living or the dead? Anyway, Savannah had a package sent. I guess it must be for you. It's up in the house. Who else is here? Clara. That's Jesselyn's mother. Colton, her fiancé. Anyone else? Depends what you mean by anyone. Any other alive or verifiably real people? No. Do you know Savannah? I did. Once. And now? And now I don't. How did you meet Savannah? We went to the same bookstore. You don't seem like the type. I'll take that as a compliment and an insult. That was a bit rude. How long ago was this? A while. Gone now. It was a little old dark place. Carried these musty old books. Stuff that didn't exist anywhere else. What kind of stuff? All sorts. But I was there researching our family. Savannah had this way of reading. Like there was something she needed to know real bad. One day I finally asked, what is it you need to know so bad? You know what she said? What? Nothing. She handed over the book she was reading and walked out. At first, I'm feeling a touch rejected. But then I look at the book. What was the book? That was the crazy thing. It was the Thornton family book of names. Births, deaths, marriage and so on, going way back. Why would she have that? Why indeed. I had to know. Took me some doing, but I tracked her down. So you met Savannah because she was trying to find Charlotte's ghost? One of those people who met her was Savannah. Ask her, and maybe she'll tell you about it. After that, she became obsessed with Thornton Hall. We got to know each other. I fell for her like a Black Tuesday banker. In the end, the landing was just as rough. What the hell does that mean, like a Black Tuesday banker? I don't get that. If somebody knows what that means, please explain it to me in the comments. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Okay, so there's some clues maybe to what's going on around the graveyard. Okay. No need to jump, just me. Can you tell me about some of these stones? I'll tell you what I can. But sometimes it's best to just look and listen. That there is Clara's mother. What can you tell me about her? Not a great deal. She loved her secrets. Never even told Clara who her daddy was. Why not? Don't know. When Clara was about ten, Rosalie got real sick. Every day Clara would ask about her daddy. I think she was afraid of being left to fend for herself. But Rosalie wouldn't say. Hmm. Okay. May Newton died January 13th, 1933. Harper Stone. Harper? Indeed. She ran away shortly after Charlotte died. Long enough that we thought we'd lost her too. One day she walked in the front door looking wild and thin as a spring sapling. Never said where she was. Her granddaddy was so mad he left the stone to remind her of what she'd put them through. She'd sit out there and read. Don't know if it was spite or if it made her feel at home. Knowing her, probably both. I'm so confused right now as to who everyone is. Okay, so I got a notebook so I can make a note of who people are. So what was that guy's name? That was... 
Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Wanna hear a ghost? Check it out. Goodbye. Get on out of here now. Wow, that was suddenly so aggressive. Uh, what was his name? Hmm, I don't remember. Okay, I'm just gonna call him Ghost Hunter Guy for the moment. And from now on, when I get information, I'm gonna make a note of it. Okay, so wait, Rosalie is the grandmother? Savannah is the fellow detective. We can figure it out as we go. It's all good. Right, what's this? Thornton Cemetery. This plaque honors those who found their final rest beyond the family grounds, including Franklin Thornton, May 4th, 1895, October 25th, 1917, defending his nation, dedicated in January 15th, 1918. Okay. It's locked. Huh. Find a way into the crypt. Okay, so I guess I have to find a key. And I think something to do with the piece of paper that I picked up will maybe mean I can find clues using the stones later or something, I think. But I think for now, let's continue on to the house, I think. Wow. Imagine living here. Jessalyn? Excuse me? Sorry. Of course you're not. I'm just tired. No, don't be. I'm Nancy. You're here to help? Savannah Woodham called me in. She seems to think there's a supernatural explanation to Jessalyn's disappearance. <sighs> a couple of days back, that would have earned an eye roll. I'm Colton, the fiancé. Welcome oh. to Thornton Hall. I'd extend you all the courtesies of the Thornton clan, but we seem to be about 20 years too late for that. You might need this. I found it in the house. Is this Jessalyn's? Yeah. It's dead, though. And the charger got mangled by something. Maybe you could channel all that inquisitive energy into seeing if you can get that old phone back up and running. Were you and Jessalyn getting married soon? Yes. Any chance this is just pre-wedding jitters? She might have had second thoughts about the wedding. Trust me, everyone does. But she never let anyone worry about her like this. She loved her family more than anything. Is it safe to assume you had second thoughts about the wedding? I never said that. True, but you implied it. You said, trust me, everyone does. I know. I remember it like it was just moments ago. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, he seems a bit suspicious. Okay, so I'm glad now I've started taking notes about who people are so I can actually remember. <sighs> okay. That's creepy. Okay. Whoa. Electricity manual. For making batteries with common household items, do it yourself. Oh, this is for the cell phone. Portable electronics are a driving force in the modern age, but the history of the battery can be traced back. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. There are three main components to a typical battery. The two terminals made of differing metals are positively charged, blah, 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 blah. I'm too dumb to understand this. Just tell me what I need to do. Making home batteries. We need coins. Mix vinegar with salt. Cut a paper towel into squares. Soak the squares in the vinegar solution. Stack pennies and nickels on a plastic plate. Or you can take a potato and insert a steel nail. Do you know what? The potato sounds like something I'm capable of. <laughs> Maybe we could just find a potato and a nail. Okay. 
Oh. I can't take this photograph? Is that Jessalyn? And her mom? Right. Anyway, uh, oh, I can't take it. I don't have all the parts I need. What have I got here? Okay, I guess I need to look around for parts. This is... This looks like a painting. I should find somewhere to place it. Okay, I'll take that. Whoa, this is so creepy. Hmm. 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 Oh, coins. Okay. I have no idea what that is. Oh! Thornton Family Cotton Processing. The store is from the barn that has the equipment for processing the cotton. Many worker lost their fingers in the processing room. Kind of sounds like the Thorntons were bad people. Okay. Oh, I need some kind of combination to get in here. Right. Wow, okay. I'll take that. Oh. Pure gum spirits for thinning paints. Do I have enough stuff now to make batteries? <laughs> mm, I think I need more stuff. Oh! Oh my god! What the hell was that? Who was that? Who was that? Beauregard Thornton. Seriously, who was that person? Oh. Wow, this room looks in desperate need of renovation. You must be Nancy. Yes, you must be Clara, Jessalyn's mother. Yes. I want you to know that I'm here to help you with anything you need. That's real sweet, hon. I know you may not want me here since you didn't actually call me yourself. So long as you help me find Jessalyn, you're welcome under what's left of my roof here. Is there anything else I should know that might help me find Jessalyn? Yeah. Keep a suspicious eye on Wade. Wade his didn't seem Wade. all that dangerous to me. He neglected to tell you about his time spent in jail, I see. As a matter of fact, Wade's a nice guy when he wants to be. And only when he wants to be. I'm happy we have another set of eyes looking for Jesse. But I do hope you know what you're getting yourself into. What do you think happened to Jessalyn? You wouldn't know by the look of this dump, but we're worth a great deal of money. Well, that's what I thought this was. But then, no, no. Not yet, at least. I, I can't believe I'm praying for a ransom note to show up. It's like someone's trying to punish us. Why do you say that? Thornton Hall was once something truly beautiful. But so much greed and tragedy built up in these walls that when they started to crumble, I wanted to save this place, make it mine. But I couldn't. So whoever took Jessie wanted us to sit here in this broken down old house waiting for her. Is there any chance Jessalyn's disappearance could be cold feet? My Jessie would never put her family through this nightmare, never. Were things good between Colton and Jessalyn? They had their rows and their romantic dinners, same as any couple. Colton had some... Well, hun, he had some issues, but they worked through them. What ones? You mentioned that Colton had some issues. What did you mean? To put it delicately, family issues. Never you mind, it has nothing to do with what's going on now. How do you know? Why is everyone here? Shouldn't we be out searching for Jessalyn? I closed down the company. The entire staff is out combing the woods. I said, sit home or join the search. You get paid either way. 
Not a soul stayed home. Jessalyn grew up in the business. She's got a lot of people looking out for her. I can be thankful for that. The police recommended a presence here. They said we'd have a better chance of noticing if something was off here, knowing the place and all. Who did Jessalyn come here with? Addison. I tried talking to her, but she was a wreck. Here. Oh. Oh, okay. We can call. She'll have calmed down a bit by now. Right. I hope. I'd better get going. Take care. So, Adeline, or Addison, whatever her name was, is Jessalyn's friend. So, okay, yeah, we need to call Addison, charge Jessalyn's phone, find a way into the crypt. Find the package Savannah had sent, explore the island, and find Jessalyn. I'm excited though, this is like really intriguing. Let's see. Espionage in a bonnet, female secret agents of the Civil War. So usually the clues and books and things lying around have something to do with the story. So it talks of this woman, Rose Greenhow. She was a member of Washington's elite society. When the war broke out, she used her social connections to obtain classified information, which she then passed along in code to the Confederacy. Uh, I don't know much about American history, but I believe that the, is it the Confederate army was the army that was like leading the civil war in America? I think. I'm honestly not 100% sure. Do correct me um, and give me a history lesson in the comments. Intelligence gathered by Rose was hidden in the hair of a female courier. Okay, this woman was like a femme fatale. Okay, this woman, Elizabeth, sent her intelligence. Written in codes and invisible ink. That could be something, maybe later. Okay, interesting. Um, what is this? The long cold night on Black Rock. The years of plenty would soon be upon the Thornton clan, but they would not come without a price. In order to keep a close watch on the production facility, Jeb had a small factory built on the Black Rock property. I guess that's the kind of factory we were just in. He did not foresee the potentially disastrous possibilities. When the winds grew cold and the waves made passage back to the mainland difficult, the workers were granted permission to stay overnight in the factory. This is all scribbled out and then just none survived. That's what I was saying earlier as well, that the they seemed like really bad people because it said so many workers lost like fingers and stuff in the factory. I think they had a lot of people working for them in really poor conditions and stuff like that. Sarah was the first to enter the factory the morning after the accident and never recovered from the shock of what she found within. Many within the town held Sarah in high regard for her kind, open nature. The employees in particular had an unwavering appreciation for Sarah, who had taken on the role of caregiver once the factory moved onto the island affectionately calling her Nana. She'd visit the factory twice a day with bread and treats, even offering a warm bed in the main house to any employee who fell ill. Shortly after the tragedy, Jeb began construction of a housing unit for inclement weather and immediately restaffed the factory despite Sarah's wishes. While Jeb seemed justifiably upset, he was determined to maintain the family business no matter what. When the new employees arrived on the island, Sarah retired to her room, refusing to leave until her death a few years later. It's been said that a handwritten note found in her pocket read, We have sown the black seeds of death and forevermore will harvest only blood. Evidence suggests that this note may have been fabricated, but the chilling message remains a popular element of Thornton lore. Jeb was hit hard by the loss of his wife, but remained steadfast in his attempts to grow the family business into something worth the tragic cost of the lives it had taken. Jeb's drive became somewhat of a family trade after he passed a few years later, as did Sarah's discomfort with the business. In the generations to come, a dogged dedication to the company or queasiness with their ill-gotten wealth became the two defining characteristics of the Thornton clan. Even the most beloved family members eventually had to choose a side. Wow, 
Okay, so there's lots of like family issues going on here. And here's pictures of them. Jeb Thornton and Sarah Sarah Emma Wakeman. Harry M. Thornton. Right. <laughs> Some oranges? Why not? Oh. I need to add some tea first. Oh, okay. And a lemon? Who am I making tea for? I already have one. Okay. Took a napkin. Oh, I can make tea for myself. Awesome. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I have to make tea for someone later. Okay. Enough of that. Uh, I guess we go upstairs. I still have to find that package that, um, what's her name? Savannah left for me. I'm just so fascinated by the story. It looks like the painting is missing. Franklin Thornton. Find the missing portrait. Oh wait, I have that. Hang on. There we go. That's done. What's those noises? Uh, but like, what does that do though? Did it do anything? What's that, cotton? Okay. My god, this house is a mess. Someone's sleeping on the floor here. Oh, this is my package. Oh, it's one of those ghost things that Wade had. Cool. The ghost of Thornton Hall. True Encounters Were Told by Savannah Woodham. She wrote a book about it. Nancy, here's some of my old paperwork from when I was looking into Charlotte myself. I know you're going to be looking for Jessalyn during the day, but night is the best time to investigate the family. That's when the spirits get restless in more ways than one. You'll probably get more out of the family then anyway. The EMF gadget I included works pretty well on the property. I don't normally use these, but there is a strong correlation between the meter peaking and documented sightings. I know you don't like things that can't be explained, but just because it can't be explained yet doesn't mean you should disregard it. Call me if you want to talk. I don't know what help I can offer, but I'm there if you need me. Good luck, Savannah. Okay, so... Here's some of her notes. Okay, so she says she got it in her head if she spent the night on the island, the kids at school would leave me alone. I snuck onto the island and her younger brother, Sean, demanded to come too. They couldn't get a boat, so they decided to swim over. Sean got pulled under by the current. Sean made it back to shore. She almost drowned. That's when she heard singing. The water around me went still and a song started swimming its way around me. Pulling me towards this thing, this woman, Charlotte, the ghost, I think. The water was ice cold and she was turning it to steam. Smoke was pouring from her like ink under the water. I knew I couldn't die down there. I knew I had to get out of the water. I don't know what happened next. I woke up on the rocks, then in the hospital. I never saw her again. I spent the rest of my life trying not to look. Okay, so this was like an account by an anonymous person just known as Swimmer. Then another anonymous account. Yeah, I saw her. It doesn't matter why I was there. They were out in the ruins. Someone called Elle was working on her stuff. 
Suddenly she dropped everything and was like, we gotta go right now. We grabbed our stuff, we ran. As we were going, there wasn't smoke, but we were all choking like there was. We could all smell a fire and in the distance we heard screaming. I wanted to go back, but Elle told me that what we heard wasn't human. We all knew she was right. We got off the island. That's all it was. This person knew her, Charlotte. When she died, part of the town died with her. I know you want to ask about the hauntings and rather you than someone else. The truth is, she's just gone. Part of me wishes she was a ghost, so I could tell her my proper goodbyes. I've heard the stories. That's not Charlotte, not the Charlotte I'd known. There was no evil in her. Savannah asked, do you think what happened the night she died might have changed that? It was an accident. What if it wasn't? Then she's Charlotte. She always was Charlotte. Okay. I can't, I can't keep this. Okay. What is this? The Thorntons of Black Rock Island. The last flight of Karenina and Dodge. So this is Roger Dodge, I think a Thornton family member, and he met a woman called Mariana. The Thornton clan did not approve. Real trouble began on a stormy night in the middle of winter. Mariana had been asked to meet with the head of a small agricultural company the Thornton business had been hoping to acquire. A small prop plane crashed in an empty field after running into an unexpectedly strong storm. All four passengers died on impact, along with the two-person flight crew. Those who knew the pair knew that at the very least, they must have been relieved to have had each other's company in those last moments as the plane fluttered from the sky. That's super sad, but... <gasps> oh, that could have been important later. Is that the ghost? Charlotte? <sighs> what was that? Charlotte, I guess. <laughs> oh no, she looks pretty real to me. Who is this? Mariana Thornton. Oh, okay. It's a picture of her. Locked. What's that smudge? It almost looks like something was painted over. What smudge? Where? Hmm. Huh. Do I have to remove... Remove it, maybe? Do I have anything? Napkin? Hmm. 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 No. Oranges? Hmm. <laughs> oh! Hang on, hmm. I have paint thinner. There's something Aha! There. What is that? Are those graves? Okay, so now I need to find the tombstones that were uncovered in Clara's portrait. Interesting. Okay. All right, so we have a lot of information right now. It's a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> Check. Okay, so I've explored the island. Check. Yeah, I found the package. Okay, so find Jessalyn, we haven't done. Find a way into the crypt, we haven't done. Charge Jessalyn's phone, I think we really need to focus on that. See if Addison remembers anything. We need to call her, so we need to find a phone. Find a way to enter the room at the end of the hall. Find out what the smudge, yeah. Did that. That's done. And find the tombstone. Okay, so I think we need to focus on finding a phone and calling Addison and making this battery to charge the phone. Okay. Um, 
Right, so... Let me just double check I didn't... Hang on. I have my own phone. <laughs> Duh, okay. What was Addison's... Oh, here! I can just call her. Duh. Hello? Addison? My name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling to see if you can help me with something. Is this about Jessalyn? Yes. I can't. I'm sorry. The sooner we can find out what happened to her, the better her chances of survival. Okay. I'll help with what I can. How's Jessalyn's relationship with Clara? Okay. Maybe a little strained. How so? Jess used to call her Chairman Mom. Behind her back, of course. Do you think Clara could have anything to do with Jessalyn going missing? I don't think Jess was afraid of Clara. But still, I can't say for sure. Mm, I don't think her mom would have had anything to do with it, but honestly, I don't know. Everyone's suspicious right now. I'm more suspicious of Colton. What do you think of Colton? What's to think? He's always been decent to me and Jess. Oh, here is a question about the bedroom key. The bedroom key is crossed out in the scavenger hunt. Do you know where it is? No. Jessalyn must have found it. But I couldn't tell you where it is. Damn. Can you walk me through what happened the night Jessalyn went missing? She was about to get married and I think the pressure of it was getting to her. It was supposed to be a night of blowing off some steam. Jess always loved a good scare. She used to make me sneak into scary movies with her when we were kids. So, in a weird way, spending the night searching for a ghost sort of made sense for a bachelorette party. At first, it was really fun. We were running around trying to scare ourselves silly. We were making these recordings like we were on a ghost hunter show. Then, things got strange. Did you notice any secret passages or tunnels while you were at the house? No, but it was so drafty in there, it would surprise me if there weren't. Is there anything you remember that might help me find Jessalyn? No. Actually, wait. Hang on. Upstairs, there was this door. Jess was desperate to get it open. Between you and me, I was relieved that she couldn't figure it out. Really? Why? I could feel eyes on me all night long. What were you doing at Thornton Hall that night? A scavenger hunt, but I don't know. There was something strange about it. In what way? Jess was looking for something toward the end of the night. Kind of desperately. It stopped being fun. That's all I know. How was Jessalyn acting that night? She was classic Jess for most of the night. Then something happened? Yeah, we were in the house and suddenly she just screams. And then she's nowhere to be found. What happened? I was alone in the house, jumping at every noise, too afraid to move. It felt like hours. Then she came back. She wouldn't say what had happened. She wouldn't even talk to me. She wanted to be left alone. She went downstairs and that was that. You said things got strange. What did you mean? It was her and me up in that freezing house, and I remember thinking, I'll never get to sleep. But then I started to feel fuzzy. Fuzzy? Like I was underwater or something. And I noticed Jess was gone again. I wanted to get up and find her, but I, I couldn't move. It was like this invisible hand was pinning me down. I heard a strange voice. It wasn't Jess. Then it was the morning. I was alone and Jess was gone. It's you weird. said you heard a voice. Charlotte. I'm sure of it. Did she say anything? She sang. I only heard a little bit. Would you consider yourself a believer in the paranormal? If you'd asked that last week, I would have made some crack about Bigfoot. And now? And now I'm going to say that I don't believe. Because I'm afraid if I let myself believe... I'll be opening a door that no one can close. Goodbye. Find Jess. That 
that's what I'm trying to do. Um, you know, let's talk to Savannah. Hi, Nancy. Did you get the package I left for you? Yes. I think they're silly, but apparently some of the people I've met swear by using EMF signatures on the property. Do you know anything about the factory accident? Nothing I can verify. It's been scratched out of the local history. When I was there, I expected to feel something when I stood near the old factory. And nothing? As many spirits as I expected. I only met one. Charlotte? That'd be the one. Dear sweet Charlotte, the terror of Black Rock Island. I spoke to Wade. I figured that might happen eventually. Can I explain, or are we beyond that? I'm sure you have your reasons. I do. Wade said he was expecting you. Why didn't you tell me that? I was going to come. I meant it when I told him I was coming. But then? But then I got scared. Tell me what happened when you met Charlotte. I'll tell you, hon. But you got to remember that you are not like me. Well, what do you mean? I have opened the door to the spirit world, and you have not. And don't you dare do it, ever. You hear? Yeah, I can agree to that. I mean it. The dead are just like lost children. If you're out there leaving a trail of breadcrumbs, they will find you. Enough of the PSA. I snuck out there to the ruins on the anniversary of her death. I waited in silence for a long time. Nothing. You didn't say the rhyme? Oh, that. Oh, it's cute, but I wasn't looking for my daddy's brain-dead bloodhound. They come when they come, and in the dead of night, she came. Stood right beside me. Just me and her, eye to eye, for a hot minute. Finally, she reached for my wrist. She pulled me through a fog that became smoke and then fire. She pulled me back to the night she died. Could you see what happened that night? I couldn't see a thing. I, I could only feel the heat. I could feel how sad she was and how angry. I'm sorry, hon. Talking about it don't come easy. See you later. Good night. Okay, let's call our friend Bess. Just see. Bess's phone. All right, bonus Ned. What are you two up to? George is in New York. So, she got the internship with that technology of tomorrow place? Yeah, Ned and I were just planning a road trip for when you're back. I was in the middle of trying to convince Ned to grow a bad mustache so we can hang out in Brooklyn. Not going to happen. Someone has to, Ned, and George already said no. It was a really angry no, too. Anyway, did you make it to the island? I did. I've been doing a little research, and I can see why Savannah sent you. Why's that? If I believed in ghosts, I wouldn't come within a few hundred miles of Black Rock Island. I can definitely see why. Even I have to admit it does have a certain abyss gaze is also into you vibe to it. Put that on a billboard. I've got your back. I've been reading up on missing persons cases and hauntings. Really? Oh, that's great. I, on the other hand, have been watching videos of otters so good at stacking things. <laughs> that's helpful. Additionally, I've kidnapped Ned. I've been so bored since George left, and Ned's a very active listener. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See? And he's also very quick to Stockholm. <laughs> Nickerson family trait. We like being liked. Oh, thanks, you two. Uh, so for anyone who's not familiar with Nancy Drew, Bess and George are Nancy's, like, best friends, and then Ned is her boyfriend. Okay, wow, there's a lot I can talk to them about. Um... Oh, hang on. I need to charge a phone that has no charger. Maybe they'll give me a hint. I need to charge a phone that has no charger. I'm not good with koans. Ned? Oh, I got this. I once made a potato battery by hooking up some wires. Yeah, well, I once turned a potato into an abomination by forgetting about it for a year. Sorry. It's hard not to get jealous around Mr. Nose Things here. Continue being useful. Actually, that's all I've got. If you find some potatoes or oranges and some alligator clips, that might get you part of the way there. I'd better get going. Bye. Okay, thanks for the tip. I'm gonna go down and see 
if I uh, can make this battery. Okay, so I've got oranges. Or hang on. Ugh. Can't I take these alligator clips out? I don't know. Oh, hang on. I need to find something to remove these nails. Oh, okay. I need to pull those nails out of the wall. Is there a hammer? Hammer or a pliers or something around here. Surely there would be a hammer lying around here because, I mean, this house needs a hammer. Okay. Um, do you know what? I'll just have a look around. There's no way off the island right now. Okay. So I'll have a look around the cemetery. Okay, so gravestone epitaph hunt. What's an epitaph? A phrase or form of words written in memory of a person who has died, especially as an inscription on a tombstone. Okay. And then there's WL in brackets. What does that mean? And then each name has like numbers after it. What does that mean? Okay, well I do also have to find the tombstones that were uncovered in Clara's portrait. So let's just have a look around and see what we can find. Oh, hang on. Ah! 54 souls. What does that mean? I'm gonna write it down in case it's important, but what does it mean? Check. Okay, so that's done. That's done. Okay, so I need to find a way to enter Charlotte's bedroom, charge Jocelyn's phone, find a way into the crypt, find Jocelyn. Everything else is done. Okay. Uh, Roger, Roger and Marie, side by side from the day they married to the day they died. Both real sweet. Charlotte and Harper's parents. May they rest in peace. Right. Yeah, Mariana Thornton. Okay. Beauregard Thornton. Mean old codger. Okay. That wasn't very helpful, but thanks. That's Charlotte. Dear sweet Charlotte, please come back. That's a sad inscription. It was a sad time. None of us wanted to see her leave. We didn't expect it to become what it's become. I saw something I can't explain in the house. That's why you couldn't get me in there for nothing. I don't believe in ghosts, but... That don't stop you from feeling them. Would you believe my happiest memories live in that house? Christmases and long summer nights stargazing on the roof. I found a set of graves without names on the markers. That is where our troubles began. What happened? Most of the family would rather it never come up. Our first factory was right here on the island. At the time, it made us a lot of money. But along the way, we got greedy. Never built a place for the workers to stay. They'd bed oh. down right on the processing floor. Nothing for heat in the winter, so the workers built fires inside. One winter, there was a wicked cold snap. They built a couple of extra big fires, and in the night, the fumes built up. 
None of them ever woke up again. That's when we split in two. Half saying this'll never happen again, and half saying accidents happen. Grieve and move on. Oh, so that's those graves I found and why it said 54 souls. It's all the workers who died. And I guess they were covered over in the painting and shrubbery was allowed to grow over them by the half of the family that just wants to forget it, that it happened and move on. Oh, hang on. Do you have a key? Do you have a key to the crypts? Sorry. Oh, well, that wasn't helpful. Oh, juicy. You don't seem like a bad guy. Can you tell me why you ended up in jail? You really want to know? I do. Then listen. I don't care if you believe me, but keep this to yourself. Okay. I wasn't close to the company then. Still ain't, but I heard through a friend of the guy down the way. You know how it goes. I heard that our processing plant in town was up to its old tricks. Hiring people who couldn't afford to quit and treating them beyond bad. Locking them in to meet quotas and such. I asked Clara. She denied, naturally. But it made her so mad, I asked. Clara's I evil. had to go check it out myself. I went in the middle of the night, and right away I saw it was true. The exit was padlocked, right in plain view of the world, and no one cared. I broke in. That's true. I was furious. I broke one of the big machines. That's true, too. So there it is. I stood up, and boy, did I get knocked down. You must be pretty mad at Clara. You don't even know the half of it. I'd better get going. Bye. Hmm. That was interesting. What do you think of Clara? She's... She's just a little severe until you get to know her. And then? I wouldn't know. You're holding something back. So what if I am? Oh. Okay. Someone's, um... Touchy. Okay, I really need to find a tool. I'd better check out what's going on upstairs. Where's the singing coming from? Oh! Nancy. Make yourself blind. Call Charlotte home. I need to figure out what this means. What? Even ghosts have their favorite haunts. Charlotte requests a meeting with you. Recite a rhyme with dreadful meter. Where dreadful meter is at its peak. Make yourself blind, don't dare peek, call Charlotte home, and hear her speak. She may just let you live. Okay. Oh, hang on, is this meant to be my bedroom? <laughs> is this where I'm staying? On the floor? <laughs> okay. Seems a bit rude since I'm helping out, but fine. I think I need a hint for this. You'll need to make a power source, find a book that will help. Well, I've done that. I just don't know how to get the nails out of the wall. Okay, you can find all needed items in the house. I looked though. I did look. Get the oranges from the parlor, use the hammer from the deck. I looked out here. Wait, I'm going the wrong way. I looked out on the deck. Damn it. Okay. Where's the hammer? Oh, hang on. Is that it there? Is that a hammer?
<gasps> How are you supposed to find that? That is so sneaky. Even with the hint, I couldn't find it for ages. Oh, I'm so annoyed. Oh, well, sure, look, we found it now. Right. We got nails. Okay, now can I build Time it? Time to recharge the battery. Great, oranges. Nails. Hmm. Mm. Can't do that yet. Can't do that yet. Why? But I don't have any more nails. Oh, I can use the pennies. Okay. All right. Let's see if all those oranges did the trick. It's not charged yet. Oh, sorry. I'm impatient. I'm sorry. That was really, really tricky. I remember I used to always suck at this part of science in school, so... It just confuses me. Okay, so I think we have to give the phone some time to charge now. And it looks like after we go through the phone, the next thing we have to do is follow the instructions on the note we got to meet the ghost. So I feel like this is a good place to leave the first video. That'll be a really exciting start to the next video. I am really, really enjoying this game. It's like a nice mix of very simple and chill, but also I think it's really intriguing as well. Let me know in the comments below if you're enjoying watching this game or also if not, uh, do give me some feedback. And I will see you very, very soon in part two of this playthrough where we are hopefully going to confront the ghost.